great guy once said, don't get it twisted. Love is a beautiful thing. Do you think so? Well, I agree as a matter of fact. But there's a question. If love is a beautiful thing, why do we experience all the issues we experience in love and marriage? I have some answers to share with you. Please stay glued to your screen and enjoy the view. I'll be back. So I want to say that that's very crucial before you even go into a marriage to discover yourself, to know who you are. And basically, for because of my bent and my persuasions as a believer in Christ, as a minister of the gospel, I always talk about us discovering ourselves in Christ. Uh, that's where it starts from. Who I am really is who I am in Christ. Uh, and I, I get to, and that really defines me. So I understand my sufficiency in Christ, I understand my completeness in Christ. I'm not needing someone to complete me. That's very crucial. People enter marriages and relationships needing someone to complete them. But when we understand our completeness in Christ, we now enter a marriage relationship, not uh, needing someone to, come to help us or give to make us complete. Rather, we enter a relationship with marriage to give. And when the motive in the relationship is about giving and giving and giving, you know, and not seeking in return, but just giving, it's a beautiful thing to store, it's a beautiful thing. So, so basically, um, you discover yourself in Christ, you, and as you discover yourself in Christ, you come to the place of purpose. And what's, once you know purpose, that's who you are. I was talking to somebody two days ago, and there's, there was this dissatisfaction about what she was doing. And I said, and she was, the person was worried, why, why all of this dissatisfaction? I said, no, it's, it's okay. I said, that's, that's your purpose calling you. So when your purpose starts to call you, everything that used to make sense stops making sense. When your purpose starts to call you, you become dissatisfied with everything. And you must answer that call. If you don't answer that call, you live a very miserable life. So sometimes your purpose starts to shout your name and shout your name and call you. And you're wondering, I used to love all of this before. I used to get excited about all of this. But what's happening? What's happening? Oh, it's not strange. Your purpose is calling you. Answer it. And that's when you start being who you really are. And, and that's crucial. And we find purpose in Christ. Basically. Yeah. First and foremost, there's somebody who made you. And that person has a design for your life. If you meet him, he will surely guide you and direct you. Because according to Jeremiah 9, 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and the hope. So if you meet him, he will surely guide you. And when you discover yourself in him, you will be very happy. You see your life divinely directed. Very, very nice question. I love that. You see, you cannot discover yourself without knowing your maker without knowing God, who is the maker of all, you know. Um, you see, children that don't know their parents, just look at their lives. They are always in search of something. They want to get to know their parents, they want to get to know their origins, so that they can know how their life is, where they came from, where they are headed and all that. The same way with us, if you don't know God, is the our, our, our maker and our creator you can't really know yourself john was talking about it in the bible he said the world does not know us because it did not know him the same way you can't know yourself if you don't know him i, I think that's the first point get to know god because christ has become our pattern he's a pattern son so the more you know christ the more you know yourself the more you you know yourself becomes you know revealed to you because all that we are is in Christ. So I think that's one way and the major way to know ourselves and to discover purpose. Okay, 
okay i i like the question but surprisingly i'm going to give a very simple answer for me and from my experience the best and easiest way to discover yourself is keep exploring um, walk into every open door you see jump into every opportunity every means or medium of expression you know just keep exploring and in exploring and in the process of doing you will strengthen you would find a place of consistency you know so keep exploring keep doing you know don't 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 shy away from opportunities don't shy away from doing things don't shy away from jumping into that door don't shy away from knocking on the door you know whatever you see that is a means of expressing keep expressing and in doing that you will discover yourself and you'll find a place where something keeps resonating with you and consistency will be perfect To discover yourself, I believe that uh, I believe in creation by God. I know some friends, I know some people who think that uh, we just came by accident, but uh, people who believe that that way is their own. For me, if you want to discover yourself, you must realize that God created you. And the Bible has told us that we have all sinned. Anybody arguing that he's not a sinner is deceiving himself. He's not being sincere. But when you accept the fact that you're a sinner and that you need a savior, you are in good hands because that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to die for us, to save us from our sins. Nobody can save himself and nobody's good enough to meet God because sin has denatured us. But since Jesus came and died for our sins, free of charge. Anybody who comes to him, accepting his weakness, his sins, and accepting that Jesus died for him, his sins are forgiven. Not only forgiven, they are deleted. You can't find them anymore. So that's the beginning. You come to Jesus to accept him as your Lord and Savior, you now have a new life. Now with this new life, God created you for a purpose. God created you in his image. As you read your Bible, as you fellowship with other Christians and the, the Word of God and in prayer, you will be growing more and more in the image of Christ. In Christ, you will find your identity. In Christ, you find your purpose for life. And you know that life is not an accident, but God has a purpose for you. So, you have to know Christ. You have to come to Him if you want to find your purpose in life. Good, self-discovery is important. Uh, in the conversation about maturity, self-discovery is important. So um, usually I'll say um, the path to self-discovery is um, talking with God and then um, talking with people who, who know you so much. That's very important. Um, um, so you, you're going to go back to, I mean, your creator, he, he designed you. There's a design blueprint for your life, it will be good to have that conversation with God and then for him to be able to tell you what your, your design blueprint, what is in your design blueprint, that's very important. But um, and from, from, from there, you're going to also go about you know, this adventure to talk with the people who really know you, your friends, your family, you know, just to also identify areas where you're gifted, where you find it easy to operate. Um, where other people sort of have a bit of difficulty but you find ease in operation you're, you're going to look out for areas where you've been rewarded also um, so you know where people other people do not get easily rewarded but you get easily rewarded reward can be words of compliments complimentary words it can be money it can be also that you stand out and uh, the applause comes to you when you do those things, those are important in pointing you to your purpose. Your giftings are important, your skills are important. And uh, like I said, a conversation with your creator is ultimately important in finding purpose. Okay, so we are all believers and the best place to discover yourself is in Christ. So as a Christian, the first place you should be looking for to find out who you are 
is in God's word in the Bible. So when you open scriptures, I know you hear this thing, it sounds like religious cliche, so I want to try and explain it. When you open scriptures, you look for everything the Bible says we are in Christ, the recreated man. We look for all the things. The Bible says he has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. What are those things that pertain to life and godliness? What are those things that we have? Who are we in Christ? What is our life like now that we are born again? What makes us a new creation? By the time you have unraveled all those mysteries, you would have discovered who you are as a believer in Christ. And that now solidifies your values in choosing a mate or in deciding who you want to spend the rest of your life with. And that's discovering the most important part of yourself. Now, the other part is understanding who you are as a person, as a human being. Now, this you can do by observing yourself. Um, I'm the kind of person who I'm always on a quest to understand if I've changed, if my values have changed. I'm always checking myself. So I tend to take things like quiz, personality pop tests, and you know, anything that helps with analyzing myself and understanding myself. Um, so I would recommend that if you can get questions that you can sit down with, think about, write, have a journal, take some kind of questions that will help you understand a little more of yourself. Questions that ask you questions about who you are, what you would do if you were in certain situations, um, asks you what your likes are, what your strengths are, analyzes it for you and tells you what you are. There are lots of apps that can help you do that. Um, lots of websites, Christian websites that can help you analyze yourself. You should take as many tests of those as you can so that you can have a full grasp of who you are. Also, you need to observe yourself. What are the things you are good at? What are the things you are bad at? What are the things that motivate you? What are the things or the intentions that you have behind certain actions you've taken and the consequences, if they were exactly what you wanted, why were they what you wanted? You ask yourself a question, why? You know, so always ask yourself questions, always check yourself, check your motives, check your um, belief systems. Also, spend time alone with yourself. When you spend time alone with yourself, you get to understand what you are comfortable with. There was a time I stayed in a whole room for a period of time and there was no light. I had no friends and the building was in darkness because no student was supposed to be around in, in campus that time. And I just stayed in that room, put on my torchlight and I just worshipped. And for the period that I stayed alone in that place, I got to know a lot about myself. I got to understand the things I love, the things I can do without, the things I can adapt to. So you will learn more about yourself when you separate yourself from all the noise. You will learn to know what voices in your head are yours and which ones that are not yours or from other persons or from other places and from other um, systems and everything. So you need to do that. Also you need to find inspiration. If there's someone you want to be like, if there's someone you think reminds you of who you are, then you can make the person your mentor. Just study the person, understand the person, ask yourself, ah, they say I'm like this person. What does this person have that makes me like, like this person? What is this person like? So you study the person, you work with the person, you build a relationship with this person. The person helps you to understand yourself better. You know, that's what um, godly men uh, mentorship is about. And that's another great way to find yourself. So there are many ways, but these are the basic ones. Oh, if I forget, I'm someone that is into tourism. So I would definitely add advise you to travel. There's something traveling does for you. It makes you realize um, things about yourself. It makes you challenge yourself. You put yourself in situations where you have no option than to try to stand out or do something different. So you find out what you can cope with, what you can't cope with. Imagine traveling to another town and you know you are broke and you don't have any money, nowhere to stay. What would you do? You put yourself in that. It's not only to theoretically imagine it. You can physically travel and then things happen. How do you respond? You know, so you can check yourself most times when you travel. You can check what you believe. You can check how firmly you believe certain things when you travel to a new place and you meet new people. Some, sometimes you need to travel to even challenge your mind, you know, challenge your opinion about the world, about issues of acceptability and tolerance and, you know, diversity, you know. So, yeah, you will learn a lot about yourself when you travel. So, yes, I always advise you to take some time out to travel somewhere new and help discover yourself. Okay, to discover yourself, um, first of all, we didn't create ourselves, we are created by God. So I think the, the first step in discovering yourself is to know God, you know, and then begin to learn His ways, begin to learn of Him. Because the more you are closer to God, you know, the more He begins to 
reveal himself to you, they might begin to understand your likes and what you don't like, you know, they might begin to understand your passion, you know, and what you think you are designed for, you know, and discovering of purpose actually it's a lifelong experience, it's not a one day event, so it's lifelong, so as you just keep knowing God, you just keep understanding yourself more, you keep improving who you are, you know, and then you begin to understand this is your passion and this is what you think you are designed for. Yeah, um, marriage is not going to solve your problem, so you better get on them now before you get married. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just laughable that you're thinking that if you're a lazy person when you get married, you'll, be, you'll not be hard working. It's, it's foolish to think that way. So um, what you need to do is, the best way to find the person you should get married is in your vision, in living your purpose. So it's the best place they should meet you. Because when they meet you there, they have an understanding of where you're going. So they decide in advance whether they want to stay or not. So I think fulfilling your purpose is the best way you can show a person that you're ready for marriage. And this goes the same way, you know, for the men and the female. It's not only men that have purpose, women have purpose. So if you're marrying a guy that's not furthering what you already enjoy doing, that's even a red flag. So um, fulfilling your purpose, it's in your purpose they should meet you uh, because that gives them a proper insight to what you want to do. So it's key for them. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed that episode, alright? Don't forget we have a lot of value to share with you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, so you know every time we have a new post, okay? Also follow us on our social media handles, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Telegram, with the name Single and Ready Club. We will love to share value. Thank you so much.